Thank you. We're starting like a Swiss clock at 10. And I welcome the participants. And uh, I want to be very fast and efficient in, in the beginning because we, we have a lot of very good speakers to this important uh, topic about research and innovation, how, how, how Horizon Europe impacts the food and agriculture sector. First, I want to say thank you to our host and chair of the working group Health and Nutrition, Christine Schneider, member of the European Parliament. Thank you for your strong support always. Then we have also to say thank you to our president, Dr. Paul Rubik, who is also today here. And we have today also two honorable guests. It is a honor to uh, welcome Mr. Cesar Luana, member of the European Parliament, vice chair of ENVI committee. And of course, from the European Commission, Roberto Beruti, member of cabinet of Janusz Wojciechowski, European Commissioner for Agriculture. Thank you that you are here. And we have also very good experts here. Patrick Coppens from uh, Food Supplements Europe, Johan Sanders, um, uh, president of FEDIMA, Jeroen Beuters, Director of International Food, and Professor Roberto Papa, who is all, um, Professor of the University of Politencia de la Marche, and um, Special Science Advisor for Agriculture, Food and Environment of ESMI Connect. Thank you very much, and I give the floor to Mr. Cesar Luena. Please, the floor is yours. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and thank you, first of all, for the organization of this event and for having invited me to it. Also, we cannot meet in person. I'm uh, confident this event will contribute to the very important conversation that we are having these days about the agri-food sector. Innovation in agriculture and in the agri-industry has been fundamental throughout history and particularly during the last decades to ensure affordable, sufficient, safe, safe food for all. The European Green Deal announced in uh, 2019 already considered the need for change and innovation in the context of climate change. We acknowledge that the necessary climate conditions to sustain crops are actually very fragile. Today, in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been reminded of how fragile conditions are to sustain not only food production, but also the food chain. On top of that, I believe the COVID-19 has changed the way citizens relate to food, increasingly valuing health and sustainability as key factors to consider when doing the groceries in the supermarket. Even the European Commission speaks of the need to transition towards healthier diets. After all, in 2017, one out of five deaths in the European Union were attributable to unhealthy diets. As a result, the agri-food sector is facing pressing needs to adaptation that undoubtedly require new ideas and approach. The role of the Horizon Europe program in this new era uh, that we are starting will be key. New requirements and consumer expectations will also bring new opportunities in the way we produce and consume. Horizon Europe is one of the tools that can help translate policies into practice. After all, there are few things more political than what we choose to put in our plates every day. The farm to fork strategy, the biodiversity strategy 2030, for which I am rapporteur in the European Parliament, or the action plan for the development of organic production are only some examples of what is coming. The 10 billion euros investment committed under the Horizon Europe program for research and innovation related to food, bioeconomy, agriculture, fisheries, or the environment is another. The agri-food sector can play an important role in creating a food environment that makes the healthy and sustainable choice the easy choice. Switching towards more healthy diets goes hand in hand with reducing the environmental impact of our food system. This is a challenge, uh, of course, but I cannot stress enough my confidence in the capacity of the agri-food industry and agri-sector in general to overcome it. And the institutions must be there to provide for a legal framework that support these efforts and ensure this transition is fair for all the workers involved in the sector as well. I will conclude my intervention making a call for cooperation and solidarity. COVID has changed the way we perceive for union, our union and our world. But it has also offered us the opportunity to do things differently this time. 
The next generation EU plan is the result of intense cooperation and discussion between member states and EU institutions that thought out of the box. Now will be the time for researchers, NGOs, private actors and policymakers to join force and contribute to a stronger and better Europe for the future generations. Thank you, good job and good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lena, for this very comprehensive overview of all the challenges we have and chances in the food sector. I think you, you mentioned very really the, the right points we have. Uh, we are what we are, what we have on our plate. So uh, in, in, in uh, the global world, two billions are suffering on overweight and uh, 800 millions on malnutrition. So we have really these both sides to see in the global world and Europe. I think it's more the overweight, what is also I'm included, who is a problem. Um, but I have a very specific question because the Horizon, Horizon Europe is focused on the, uh, on the mission to rise the awareness of the importance of soil and will develop solutions for, for the restoring its health and functions. Healthy soils are fundamental to the agri-food industry, but the EU actions on this are limited. What do you think can be done to improve its health and functions? Please. Okay. I am uh, I'm glad you make this question because um, as a rapporteur of the biodiversity strategy uh, for the EU 2030, this is a topic of great importance to me. Healthy soils can accommodate thousands of species per square meter among bacteria and microorganisms, which all together play a pivotal part for fertile and global food security. But however, Every year, soil erosion, soil contamination, desertification, etc., make millions of hectares infertile. Despite of its importance, soil is the sole environmental topic that doesn't count with its own EU legal framework. There are some legal provisions in water, industry, or agricultural legislation, but the treatment of soil is very fragmented in the EU. That is why in the biodiversity report, in my biodiversity report, I call on the European Commission to present a legislative proposal for soil. It is very important that all the stakeholders start a conversation about this, that we raise awareness and that we eventually join force to provide for a strong legal framework on soils, protections, and also restoration. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this, to this answer. And uh, I say thank you again for you that you take your time. We know that you have the pressure to catch your flight and it shows how important it is for you that you take your time today. I can only to invite you to the SM Connect network because uh, if you're speaking about health and nutrition in this context, we have also to speak in the research innovation that SMEs has a key role here. I think this is also a very branding of, of Europe but we have also to see that uh, Europe is investing in this sector compared to to United States or Japanese still to less compared less than 50% in the United States, 30% less than than Japanese. I think there's a lot to do, and we need every political support we can uh, we can get. Thank you very much again, and I will give now the floor to our chair of the SNC Working Group, Health and Nutrition, Christine Schneider. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Good morning to, to everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you all in this webinar on the research and innovation Horizon Europe impacts the food and agriculture sector. Consumer need to have access to safe, healthy, high quality and affordable food. This is what I work for as the EPP rapporteur on the farm to fork strategy. The challenge is now, how to ensure that these basic human needs are met for optimal health and well-being while protecting the environment and ensuring that the European food and drink industry is able to develop its full growth potion, provide new jobs and remain competitive in the global marketplace. Research and innovation can help tackle social challenges and increase the competitiveness. With Horizon Europe, we have the right tool to 
research and innovation. We need further research on healthy food and diets, which focus on the nutritional need and the impact of food on physiological functions and physical and mental performance. Our research needs to include all stages, food design, packaging, process design and control, waste reduction, and by product valorization. It needs to address critical issues such as affordable and high quality foods, traceability, logistic and service, socioeconomic factors, and the limitation of negative impacts on the environment and climate change. Horizon Europe will contribute to achieve healthier diets, food safety, and security for all Europeans and ultimately aim to help and recreate hunger in the world. With the adoption of the Horizon Europe program in Pillar 2, Global Challenges and European Industrial Competitiveness, funds are available to shape our European food and agriculture for the future. The impulse that are evoked her affect our farmers as well as our, as our manufacturing immediately and give them impulse and opportunities for innovation. In the farm to fork strategy, the reduction targets are a major, major issue, issue for our work. All targets need to be based on through impact assessments. All methods of calculation and the baselines need to be explained for each target. And all combined impacts of different targets should be considered as well with the interplay with Horizon Europe. This requirements will be brought forward. Very important fields for intensive research are for me, precision farming with the reduction of pesticides and fertilizer, combined with innovation and new breeding techniques, we will be able to enlarge the farmer's toolbox in efficiency and effectiveness. Food labeling. Food labeling plays an important role towards healthier, sustainable and safe food systems. It is an important change for customers and producers. A mandatory labeling providing clear and easy to understand information on the nutrition profile, the origin, the compliance with animal welfare provision and sustainability will guide the consumer toward a healthier and safer nutrition. I imagine that the QR code could provide additional voluntary information for agri-food products, EU for your healthy food to consumer in the supermarket, at the breakfast table, wherever. Research will help us to find the best solution for our food and agriculture sector. I'm looking forward for a very, very interesting discussion. And I please excuse me if I have to leave the, uh, the, the meeting. I still have to justify three objections and the end the committee at the same time. Now, please don't uh, please understand me. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Schneider. You understand this because you are normally always there, so you can also once have an excuse. And I think you're working very hard for the interests of, of all of, of, I think this we have to see always in, in this context. It is together to see with the farmers, with the food uh, companies, with the, with the uh, consumers, that they have to work together and, and that is connected and common interests also, I think, uh, in the mid and long term, that, that uh, we are working together. And for this, I have to say, it's very important that also the political framework in Europe is, is innovative and, and strong. And uh, it is a honor for me to have as keynote speaker, Mr. Roberto Beruti here, member of the cabinet of Janusz Wojciechowski from the European Commis Commission. Please, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to all of you. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here this morning. And I try, I listen uh, carefully the two introduction statements uh, made by the two honorable uh, member of the parliament. And I'm trying, uh, if I'll be able, talking about technology to share my screen, to drive you through what the commission and uh, altogether uh, European Union is trying to do in boosting what is the involvement of uh, research innovation 
also uh, into the agri food sector and uh, especially to help uh, farmers to make the step uh, forward and uh, being more competitive in producing healthy food and uh, in enough quantity of uh, food for a growing uh, uh, number of citizens that is uh, is uh, nowadays facing. Uh, I just want to open a, a bracket to say that nowadays during this pandemic, the food, the agri food sector in Europe proved that is uh, uh, very reactive and very resilient. And uh, we have to thank the agri food sector and above all the farmers that were and uh, are able nowadays to provide enough quantity of food and uh, healthy food and uh, secure food. So uh, I just want to thank uh, publicly uh, all the workers in this sector because they guarantee our uh, supply, the supply for, uh, for the food that uh, is never happened to miss in the supermarkets and in the shops. So thanks a lot uh, by uh, the deep of my heart and uh, by all our staff for the huge effort that this sector did uh, during this uh, not easy period. Let's try to make this share of screen now for farmers, foresters and rural communities who are immediate managers of natural resources and the backbone of food system. The European Green Deal sets ambitious targets among others. They need to reduce, as you can see from the picture, uh, by 50% the overall use and risk of chemical pesticides and reduce use by 50% of more hazardous pesticides by 2030 achieve at least 25% of EU agricultural land under organic farming and significant increase in organic aquaculture by 2030 as well. Reduce sales of antimicrobials for farmed animals and in aquaculture by 50% again by 2030 and reduce nutrient losses at least 50% uh, in using fertilizer by at least 20% by 2030. Research and innovation are key sources and uh, of a new knowledge and solution enabling and accelerating the process required to achieve those challenging targets. In fact, as we speak, innovation, including digital technologies, are transforming the way farmers manage land and produce food for us. Uh, the good news is that EU, uh, we are not starting from scratch today with uh, research and innovation. Uh, since 2014, Agri has taken a leading role in programming and implementing agriculture research and innovation. And we developed a long-term strategy approach to EU agriculture research and innovation. Already back then, the European Green Deal and the particular farm to fork uh, already mentioned by the previous speakers were at the heart of the research and innovation strategy. Uh, to put research innovation strategy into action, we have successfully been implementing through different types of projects supported under two European policies, the common agriculture policy uh, that you all know, and the research innovation framework program Horizon 2020, working in close strategy. Besides, what is important to highlight is that we implement the strategy through different types of projects at the EU and local level, and that we have successfully implemented the so-called multi-actor approach to promote interactive action model, non-traditionally linear. 
The approach explicitly requires the participation of a variety of factors, farmers, food businesses, consumers, advisors, and researchers with complementary knowledge and skills in the development of innovative solution from projects, conception to implementation. This approach allows to better take into account the needs of practitioner, as well as significantly speeds up the uptake of innovative solution on the ground. As a result to advance knowledge and develop diverse innovative solutions for sustainable agriculture, the EU has supported since 2014 until today around 315 projects at the EU level under Horizon 2020. Uh, out of there, 190 projects with multi-actor approach. Uh, and more than 2,000 uh, EIP agri uh, experimental groups at the local level under the Rural Development Fund of the Common Agriculture Policy. And there is a growing and improving network and increasing volume of prediction oriented knowledge and innovation ready today to be applied, mainstreamed on the market and the, to accelerate the progress toward the, the targets and objectives to the, of the Green Deal and the future cap. However, the Green Deal targets are objectives need to be achieved by 2030, as uh, has been said. It means that we have nine years and nine growing seasons. Therefore, it's time to step up our efforts on research and innovation. To step up first, uh, we need uh, to match them with appropriate resources. Under Horizon Europe, there will be almost uh, 9 billion for research innovation under cluster six, dealing with matters related to food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment. To step up our efforts, we need also to target well the investment and use effective instruments to implement the research actions successfully. In other words, we need a plan. Uh, we have done exactly, uh, we developed strategic plan 21, 20. We four. cannot hear you at the moment. Or? Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yes, we can understand you. Sorry, to step up efforts, uh, we need also to target well the investment and use effective instruments to implement the research innovation actions successfully. In other words, we need a, a plan. We have done exactly, we developed strategic plan 21-24 in a truly and uh, uh, creative interactive process. The strategic plan was adopted the 15th of March. As you can see, there are um, six expected impacts of research and innovation that we want to achieve in the long term and that cut across all intervention area sectors of cluster six. The long term impacts defined in the strategic plan have been the basis for organizing the fine work program 21, 22, around seven corresponding destination. Five destination corresponds to Green Deal initiative. Destination two is dedicated fully to the farm to fork strategy. Then there are also destination one, sorry, I have to move forward, that match well, the respectively biodiversity strategy and ecosystem. Destination two, I said, in uh, dedicated fully to the farm to fork. Destination three is a circular economy action plan as well as bioeconomy and uh, forestry strategies. 
destination four with zero pollution ambition and destination five with climate actions uh, devoted to land, oceans and water for climate actions. There are two additional destinations aiming to accelerating the twin ecological and digital transition, ensuring the rural, uh, coastal and urban communities are equally involved and benefit from these transitions. Is destination six, as well as fostering innovative governance models, environmental observational and digital solution as enables destination seven, the research and innovation action in the work program gave the way to this destination. Now, more concretely, um, I, I'd like to give you a few examples of research and innovation uh, priorities for agri-food sector under Horizon Europe. There are key for delivering on the Green Deal and in particular for farm to fork strategy, thereby contribute to ensuring food and nutrition security for all. The research innovation uh, uh, priorities. So replying to the question, what are our research innovation priorities to support the farm to fork strategy? In addition to the what question, it's important to say a few words about how we plan to implement research and innovation priorities. We want to continue with a successful multi-actor approach. We will also strengthen the EIP Agri and the ACIS in their CAP strategic plans. Member states will need to scale up support for EIP Agri and ACIS and strengthen the resources to develop and maintain appropriate advisory services needed to achieve the Green Deal objectives and targets. Besides, we also leave space for new approaches, implementation instruments. We are working on launching a uh, research innovation mission in the area of soil health, caring for soil is caring for life, ensure 75 of soil are healthy by 2030 for healthy food, people, nature, and climate. Here, research innovation cooperation at global level will also play a key role. Given that EU only represent 10% of public research innovation investment made by member states, and it's key to foster synergies with them, this is why large scale researcher and innovation partnership with the member states and associate countries are being prepared as part of the Europe, Horizon Europe work program in 2023 and 2023. For at the global level, cooperation will be fostered with continuous support to the International Research Consortium, ERC, start ID. AZ on animal health and the establishment of the new International Research Center in the area of uh, will and carbon. Uh, let me end up in, uh, in telling you that uh, applying to the, to the calls of the first Horizon Europe work program that will be published in May, uh, it's possible to uh, try to start this, uh, vir this uh, virtual uh, path and uh, partic in participating uh, in the Horizon Europe Cluster 6 info days that will, be, will take place in the end of May. Uh, it will be possible to go uh, more in deep in what is uh, uh, our scheme and our plan to boost and to foster this uh, strategic and crucial uh, uh, aspect of the future of the agriculture. Thanks a lot for all and sorry to mix it up a little bit, but it was uh, too long and I just wanted to not bother you with all details. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Barutti. I think it was a very interesting presentation. It shows us also 
how complex this topic is, which uh, which I think it changed in the last 30 years what it is, what when we speak about agriculture, what it means, innovation and research and ending up in uh, uh, to to digitalization and coming from 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 the classical agriculture to really also to sectors who are overlapping because I think it's not only the agriculture food sector is uh, develop innovation at this point uh, and also that you mentioned uh, that how important it is the connection and synergies to use I think for SMEs it's very important I, I, I see this all the time that there, there are problems to work together cross border and they need guidance and, and, and help and also trust in the end uh, because it means also if you share innovation and, and also research also how to use it and, and um, I, I think Dr. Paul Rui will say more about this, uh, about uh, this topic, how to protect uh, your, your patents and so on in this context. And I think it's also very, very important that you show that this is also a global uh, um, question because uh, we see that the population is rising until 2050 to 9 millions. We need 60% more food and uh, there are rising up a lot of questions because the main, uh, main population we will have then in Africa or the problematic of China of, of, of water, what is in fact food is water, in fact, because without water you have no agriculture. I think that many questions are rising up and also distribution of food, changing diets. I think you tackled all these points, uh, but I think how to bring it to, to, to our entrepreneurs that have easy access trust, I think it's very important. We have now the very good interventions. I think they will bring it, uh, they will highlight some aspects of, of your presentations and bring the perspective into. And we start with Patrick Coppins, Director of Scientific and Regulation Affairs Food Supplements Zero. Please, the floor is yours, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, Horst. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, there is no doubt that the European Commission is investing massively in uh, in research in the agri-food chain under the Farm to Fork strategy and the Green Deal. Uh, I will specifically focus on the last part of the um, uh, product development chain, uh, namely how to ensure that um, innovations that have been funded can uh, easily and rapidly be put on the market as marketable products. And there are actually in the, uh, in, in the food area, three factors that uh, are not favorable at this moment. And that may result not only uh, for uh, European companies to refrain from investment in innovation, but even this, uh, from, um, lead to dec decisions for com from companies to, to move this, res this research outside of the European Union. Um, like for instance, take the development of uh, research into alternative proteins or sugar replacements, which are very important uh, aspects for the public health um, uh, arm of the farm to fork strategy. Well, the first factor that is uh, not stimulating is of course the rigidity of legislation itself. Uh, there are of course very legitimate le reasons to regulate uh, and food safety is one of the most important one which we fully endorse. But sometimes legislation is so detailed and so prescriptive that it actually hinders innovation. Uh, take for instance, the example of, of food additives which are necessary for technological purposes in certainly in very complex foods like, uh, like replacers of, of sugars or, or proteins. Well, the conditions of use in the legislation are so detailed and so specific that it is not possible to use a uh, food additive that, is, that may be necessary for a product innovation in an application that is not in that legislation. And of course, the, it, one can ask the commission to change that, but that is a very difficult uh, process uh, which is not always initiated and also takes very much time and also does not include any incentive for the company 
requesting because the uh, research and innovation that they have done is not protected in any way. So in that respect, companies often refrain from these innovations because the regulatory situation is too prescriptive. And um, one notable example, for instance, is the fact that you cannot use intense sweeteners in products like biscuits or uh, in pastry, um, which as you can imagine, could be a very good tool to reduce the sugar content in these products, but the legislation simply does not permit that. The second factor is that in some cases there is a pre-market authorization required, and that is certainly the case for uh, novel foods, which involve new products and new product processes, but also for nutritional substances and also for health claims. And we see that the uh, authorization process is often extensively long, uh, so long that it is uh, yeah, not always leading to uh, companies and wanting to engage in such processes. Take, for instance, an example of the health claims, uh, which are very important tools to communicate health benefits to consumers and therefore help uh, the move to more healthy diets. Well, um, in 2014, there were 47 decisions on health claims, of which 38 were negative, were rejected. Uh, in 2018, that had decreased to 11 decisions and none authorized. And in 2020, there was nothing at all. So you see that in the last five, six years, the research and innovation in the health claim area has completely uh, been, been removed, it's completely uh, decreased. Uh, and one of the factors is, of course, the criteria, which are quite demanding, but one of the factors is also the length of the process. Um, if you take a, a typical example of a claim with a positive EFSA opinion that is being discussed today, well, that claim was submitted early 2017, and the EFSA opinion was published in March 2018. And it's only now that discussions with the member states are ongoing on whether to accept the claim with a positive opinion. So that should actually be a formality. And one can ask whether a period of four years is not a bit over exaggerated for the simple process of accepting a health claim. We see the same in the novel food area. The novel food legislation was renewed in 2018. And one of the main reasons was that before that, it took very, very long. The average authorization time for a novel food was almost four years with examples of eight to nine years for an authorization. Now the new legislation is definitely an improvement and the experience has shown that it is now on average, it takes now on average 1.5 years for an authorization of a novel food involving an EFSA opinion and five to six months for an authorization of in, uh, a novel food not involving an EFSA opinion. But still, if you take the, certainly for small and medium sized companies, the investments needed in the research to do the studies and the time needed for that, which you can say will take the, the three to five years on average, if you then have to add another one and a half year on average for the authorization, you can imagine that for investors investing in the research, this is not really an ideal situation. And some of the projects just fail because the investors say it takes too long and we do not have um, the return or an investment. And for nutritional substances it's even worse because after a novel food authorization a nutritional substance must also be authorized and included in the positive list and that process alone takes over one year it has no added value at all because the novel food is already authorized but it limits the possibility for the applicant to to sell the product in Europe before it is added to the list. Uh, and since the protection of proprietary data starts running at the moment that the novel food authorization is published, well, the company simply loses one fifth of that time already simply because of an orderly regulatory process that could equally have been carried out in 
parallel with novel food. So also that is a really important deterrent for companies to engage in the European Union, because in other regions, they do not have that time loss and they can market their product immediately. And the third factor is the transparency regulation. The transparency regulation that was that uh, was uh, that is applied since uh, 27 March this year, of course, ensures full transparency to consumers on the scientific data underlying an authorization. But it also ensures full transparency to competitors. Uh, and that regulation now imposes that the full application is published at the moment an application is submitted for authorization. That means one for a novel food, for instance, one and a half years on average before the authorization is there. And the possibilities for keeping certain data confidential are restrictive as compared to before. So that means that you do not only have to wait in the European Union for your authorization, but the whole competition and especially companies outside the European Union are scrutinizing this because they are keen on copying European innovations, putting these on the market immediately outside the European Union, even before in the European Union, the applicant has got the authorization to market the product. I think that we do not need to draw more, more pictures about that. These are really elements that may deter companies to invest in innovation in the European Union and may even decide those companies to first do the research outside European Union, launch the products there, see what the return of investment is, and then see whether in Europe this is also a possibility. So I have given you three, three examples of uh, hindrances cre created by the current legal situation that I think should be considered to facilitate the transfer of funded research and innovation in the food area into marketable products quite quickly and easily. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. I think this is a very important aspect you mentioned. Uh, Mr. Berruti is back soon he has a call of his commissioner at the moment and uh, but i think we will ask him also the question because i think it's important not to see it's not only a finance question it's only like you say it's it's the environment of regulation or of innovation we produced and it's uh, I, I think this uh, my question would be to mr Beruti, is there a strategy who is taking this in account that we only not see we are founding innovation and what is going on that if you want to reach these targets of, of sustainability, feed the people, how it is uh, coordinated with regulation that we say we have to speed up the processes, we have to make more, more, uh, more efforts for intellectual property and so on. I, I think this is a very important aspect we should discuss later also. And uh, now we're coming to Johan Sanders, president of FEDIMA. Um, I think you're presenting one of the products of food, bread, what it means like potatoes, uh, rice, as the fundament of, 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 of nutrition of, of, of the majority of, of people in, 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 on this world. Uh, please, the floor is yours. You have to unmute. Again. Yeah, I also am, but I was sharing. That was the problem at the same time. Um, so, so thank you uh, very much for um, for having me here to uh, today and um, representing uh, uh, Fedima. Um, and maybe um, before we start, uh, a short introduction of Fedima. Fedima is the, uh, the European Association for uh, Bakery Ingredients, and our vision is to um, to support and grow the the bread and pastry market. Uh, needless to say, uh, bread, uh, as we discussed before, is one of the, the staple foods. It's one of the key food products on uh, on our 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 plate, and um, we represent um, uh, an industry of five billion uh, turnover and about twenty five thousand uh, thousand people in in Europe. And our mission is to to create an, a favorable environment uh, to have a sustainable and innovative bakery industry. So there's two words which are already essential in this in this mission, and this is a mission we had already for long long term: sustainable, innovative, but also a favorable environment. So really, what Patrick was just explaining to have a 
favorable environment is, is one of the key challenges uh, we, we see uh, we see as well. So, so what is an association uh, uh, busy with? Well, what, what, you, what you see is, is and I, I find it um, interesting at the moment, is that you see a sort of short-term short and long-term uh, uh, dimension popping up. The, the whole uh, health and economical crisis, uh, Brexit, are, are, are short-term, but also, let's say, maybe long-term uh, uh, elements which will affect our, our, our thinking as industry, but also as association. And on the other side, we really want as association, as industry, we want to push for more sustainable business practice and nutritional health uh, and healthy food. So, so we see this challenge at the moment and uh, that, that we all focus on, want to focus on farm to fork and the green deal. But sometimes in a day-to-day -day business, you are in a kind of uh, survival, uh, survival mode. And we need to be very um, aware of that, let's say, uh, paradox. So, so, um, what, 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 what is Fedema thinking about our you know, research and development about sustainability? And, and one of the things what we, what we did as, as Fedema, we have a, a sustainability committee. And with that, we, we bring together the experts of, of all the companies and all the associations uh, working on sustainability. And, and one of the, um, not surprising, but maybe good to mention is that most, uh, let's say companies um, and, and, and associations have very uh, knowledgeable, sustainable people working in their companies. That was not four or five years ago. What you now see is that really uh, the, the, the industry is aware and taking action, action on that. And, and, and as an industry, we, we see a few areas which we really find important. And, and one of course, and, and I think we sometimes underestimate that is reducing food waste. Uh, one of the main co consumptions of food is actually our, our bin, you know, what we throw away. So anything what we can do to reduce food waste will help everything what we want to do from a sustainable point of, point of view. We look at climate, we look at a healthy diet. We are very aware that bread and bakery products are, are a staple food. So therefore promoting a healthy diet is important to us. Uh, a healthy workplace, uh, needless to say, bakery ingredients need to be healthy in the use, uh, need to be healthy and, and safe to use. And we support our communities and, and, and on responsible sourcing. So, so let me give you, um, uh, let's say, a list of what is in our position paper on as, as, a, as an association on sustainability. But let me also illustrate with a few examples then what we are doing there. So the first one is sustainable packaging. And, and this is an obvious one. Everybody will say we need to work on sustainable packaging. But there's, there's a few opportunities and challenges. First of all, we need to have a sustainable packaging which not reduces the shelf life of our products because then you might have a sustainable packaging but you have more waste. And what we've done as, as, as Fedima, we were bringing, and I think this is an important role the European Union can promote, but also an association will do, is bringing partners together to define and develop a sustainable packaging solution. Each of our companies, and, 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 and Horst, uh, this is not only for large companies, but also SMEs, each of our companies is too small to probably drive an innovative packaging solution, which is sustainable for our industry. But if we do it together, we can do this. So that's exactly what we're doing as a, as a, as a FEDIMA as uh, 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 association. We bought the responsible sourcing. We, we buy many ingredients uh, and Palm is one of them, but there's many more where we really see it as a drive for more sustainable um, uh, options. And, and then energy emissions and, 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 and I mentioned waste. Um, I, I, I think we, we make it not explicit, but one of the key things what the bakery industry of ingredients has been doing is to allow bread products, pastry products to be fresh for more than a few days. And it sounds maybe commercial, but it's a very sustainable point I want to make. If you can eat a bread after two or three days because it's still fresh, it still tastes well, and that's one of the key things which you can do with innovation and technology, you don't have the waste. You don't therefore have the energy emission to grow the grain, to mill the grain, to bake the bread, to transport the bread, because basically all what you throw away, all that resources are wasted. So for me, a key point to make is we should drive innovation to reduce waste of our food products. With that, we solve many, many challenges and have many, many opportunities. And then health and nutrition, I think it was mentioned already by Patrick, and I really resonate with you, what you've been saying is, 
there's many borders and hurdles to uh, to basically uh, to innovate but there's also something what we can do as as a, as a as a community i think there's a real need to educate our consumers what is healthy food or not healthy food sometimes we as experts in our ivory towers we assume that consumers know what is healthy or not healthy. And we sometimes try to regulate, but I also strongly believe that education is also one of the key elements what we can do. So as an association, what do we do? One of the things what we do in health and nutrition is we will do promotional campaigns about what we feel are the healthy components, the even more healthy components of our industry. So this year we will do a promotional campaign as an industry to, um, on, on whole grains. We did a, a, an industry campaign on, on sourdough. And what is such a campaign all about? We do first research to learn what consumers do not know and do know about those categories. And to a big surprise for me, but maybe for you as all, many consumers do not know why whole grain is healthy. Many consumers do not know why a sourdough is healthy. So it's important that we as an association, but also as a total community, explain to our consumers what is healthy. So that's one of the key opportunities um, I see. And the one thing, and, 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 and I think because we're sitting here together as, as Europeans, what I see, one of the main barriers apart what Patrick has been mentioning, but one of the key barriers is that I see a fragmentation of, of what's happening in our, in our countries. A few years ago, there was a tendency to be, have very common guidelines and regulations what I see now is that some of our countries start to regulate separately, and that is not helping innovation. If a company finds that he needs to develop a product for each individual country, we will see a problem that they will not invest the right money and the right, let's say, efforts to innovate. So a European playing field, and maybe this is too obvious to mention, but the European playing field is, I think, at this moment, still a very important challenge for, uh, for, for the EU and for us as, as, as a FEDIMA. So I hope I give you some examples of what we do and what we see as opportunities to uh, to innovate in this um, very important part of the uh, the food industry, the the bakery ingredients uh, industry. With that, I want to thank you for your um, for your for your time to listening to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johan. I think uh, you shows how companies are handling now this this uh, these topics because, like you say, it changed in the last five six years. You have to facing uh oh sorry <laughs> my my camera was uh, not connected um yet how this is also a challenge for you to to now to adapt this because it's now many topics at once you have to handle and it's it's about environment it's it's about uh, uh quality of nutrition and i think um there are many things uh, to, to, to take into account. Food waste you, you mentioned, and I think this is for Europe one of the, the major problems. But uh, if we have to say that we have so, so many people to feed in the world, we have really to think that Europe is not only feeding them in the end of Europe. We have to perhaps also to feed in a transition time also Africa, that other continents are depending on us. So there will be a lot of questions if we're going uh, how to handle this because we want to have more bio food, more sustainable food. At the same time, it has an effect of, of the output of food. And if we have to share food, I think there are many ethically questions so coming up well, who entrepreneurs are facing and, and companies. And um, I think this is a good example for you, especially if it's we're speaking about bread. And now we're coming to Jeroen Wouters, Director of International Food Valley from the Netherlands. Yes. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone, and a pleasure to participate in this meeting and, and hear all your uh, uh, points of view and also the new opportunities within uh, the Horizon uh, Europe uh, programs. So uh, very great to hear. So my name is Jeroen Wouters, indeed Global Ecosystem Development uh, Director International at Food Valley. I brought along some slides also, so I, I will share them uh, with you. And um, um, yeah, with that, I hope to uh, guide you through some of the information uh, here. Do you see this correctly right now? I can do the uh, presentation modus. Hopefully that will work. Yes, this better? Yes, that's amazing. 
Yeah, perfect. So I will, I will guide you along. And, and the fun thing is that I'm next to uh, working at Food Valley, also the innovation manager of sports and nutrition at the Dutch Olympic training facilities of Papendal, uh, in which I will also highlight the topic of health and nutrition uh, with you as one of the examples uh, to that. And that is also referred to quite a bit already in this uh, session. Um, what is uh, what I will do? I will talk a bit about the global challenges and global solutions, also addressed by uh, Heinz uh, earlier. EU collaborations, personalized nutrition as an example, and the new recent uh, partnership with uh, the World Economic Forum we uh, embark upon. And um, yeah, we'll briefly guide you through this. So uh, Food Valley NL uh, focuses more on the cluster perspective, so uh, network uh, fully focused on uh, food innovation. And we refer to it as a, let's say, ecosystem, a place where people meet that are uh, driving this innovation and are willing to uh, think along the lines of uh, 2050, a longer time horizon to develop tasty, affordable, healthy and sustainable food for the people, planet and animals on that. And yeah, there are, of course, quite some challenges around that. But I think we from the connection of being an ecosystem can assist in, in providing those solutions. And the uh, ecosystem um, is uh, focusing in our case on a few uh, key topics that are addressed here. Uh, the program on protein shift, uh, we heard that topic also earlier, uh, and a an, uh, protein transition, balance between plant-based and, and uh, animal-based type of proteins, but also novel protein sources. Program of circular agri-food, so a lot on sustainability, waste reduction, for example, waste use. And the program of food and health, which is focusing yeah, on, on the benefits of, of food in a nutritional point of view. And I will highlight them that. And then we say, on one hand, you see innovation development as key topics. But on the other hand, we also try to stimulate this uh, ecosystem in its activities with different programs. And we refer to that as ecosystem development um, uh, with international activities, entrepreneurship, human capital, and, and also shared facilities uh, at Food Valley. And uh, this all starts basically regional, so to say, maybe uh, in a European uh, perspective and with a, with a network of, of a large uh, group of partners, companies involved in this, but also research organizations, in investments and, and bank uh, financing opportunities. And we bring that uh, together as the Food Valley uh, organization. And uh, a few key items to it is that there's, of course, a lot of R&D going uh, taking place in-house uh, and that that is of course stimulated but we also like to yeah, facilitate in that interaction and especially in the interaction between uh, let's say academia or research and and companies how to uh, facilitate in that transition and uh, if we look to our partner profile it's international so of course uh, we, we are a Dutch organization started around Wageningen University and had a lot of interaction there but now this is a global uh, ecosystem where also international partners participate. And uh, the fun thing also is if you look at the, the profiles, it's a mix, a mix of corporates, SMEs and also startups that are rising. And you might not recognize all those names, but that are also um, yeah, facilitated in, in the development. And a key item I also highlighted here in bold is, is the public private partnerships and how to assist those type of collaborations to yeah, also drive and set up thematic uh, consortia but also drive these societal challenges as we referred to earlier this meeting but also in in the topics of attention of uh, food valley and now now and then as i mentioned also in the perspective of smes there's a lot of uh, supporting facilities we we try to bring on to support startups and scale up smes to yeah assist and be helped in their uh, ambitions and their transitions also in the food uh, system and for that, we also set up a new program, 2030, so also a longer time horizon in which we can uh, develop that. So that is giving you uh, some of the uh, examples on, on the way we work. And I would like to bring out one specific uh, set of uh, EU collaborations in this, in this perspective also. And those are even yeah, coming from the earlier program, so to say, uh, still running and, and some still to start. Also with, with some SME uh, specific uh, interest, because that is also where you see the joint activity, for example, in COSME uh, programs and co-international type of activities, we, we help in, in pan-European type of collaborations and also in the internationalization of, of uh, SMEs. And uh, a very interesting one in this perspective is, is a newly to be started project, Global Future in, in the middle, which is also a can 
uh, a pan-European uh, cluster collaboration with uh, partners from France, uh, Denmark, uh, Belgium, Spain, Slovenia, uh, in, in the interaction with uh, Japan, Singapore, and South Korea and Thailand. So we uh, assist in this, is in this development. And the, the topic of interest there is also sustainable agri-food uh, production uh, in that respect. So we, we participate in various programs and we also participate in, in a program with the World Economic Forum. And I will explain a bit more about that later on to give the dynamic. And we will definitely keep a good eye on all those new uh, programs in, in Horizon Europe and, and great to hear. And we are very open to this type of collaboration. So that is here with also an open innovation to continue building upon that. And one key topic, as I mentioned, is for us is personalized nutrition that falls within that food and health uh, topic. And a few items in that are uh, highlighted with the bullet points. So making the healthy choice the easy choice. How can we stimulate that yeah, to assist consumers to support in that behavior? Especially also in yeah, also a bit in, in the COVID-19 uh, situation, the balance in food intake and physical activity. How can we support that? And how can we stimulate that? It's very well related to the topic of sports and I mentioned earlier also. But also to see whether these personalized tools and monitoring tools and biomarker analysis can also empower consumers to, at a certain time, better understand their nutritional status and their health status related to nutritional intake. And this is maybe a bit more fancy, but that's definitely a way forward where also data and technology can assist in the, yeah, the guidance of, of um of consumers in that respect. Now, in a great example, I always like to uh, bring out and uh, and um, yeah, bring forward to you of those public-private partnerships is the initiative of e to move I'm personally the director of this initiative, which is focusing on the innovation in, in sports and nutrition, which has, of course, also some elite athlete type of focus eh, that are great examples of individuals that are really focused on sports performance and also their nutritional choices they make but that has definitely a wider impact on the individuals that are maybe amateur or self-starting athletes and also uh, can find inspiration in those strategies and that is basically spreading to a much wider audience of active uh, individuals and we see of course a large community of people involved in that and this consortium is multi-partner as you see with um, uh, research, academic research, but also applied research, and also the training of, let's say, the new professionals in in uh, dietitians and and um, education of uh, other staff members, so to say. Huh? So they are the professionals in guiding uh, consumers, but also the hospital setting is, for example, included. Like, hey, what type of approaches can be used in physical activity and nutrition? is in from a hospital uh, point, time, uh, point of view. And of course, then we, we refer to the Dutch Olympic training facilities as well. And we see that there's a lot of um, startups and SMEs participating in this field. And that's also interesting in this uh, connection eh, with the SME Connect today, that especially for the target group nutrition, for the relatively smaller groups you would like to address, SMEs play a key role in providing specific type of food products or addressing the needs to the individual target groups. And that is often overseen by corporates or larger companies because that specific target of this, yeah, this, this smaller groups is, is harder. And so we, we definitely see a very nice connection to SMEs in this uh, arena, so to say, in this field. Now, and that is uh, light, highlighting a lot of new innovations and new products. Um, and you see yeah, some are focused on elite athletes, but also a wider audience is definitely benefiting from this and, and research that and innovation that is uh, taking place with uh, also, uh, uh, let's say, basic nutritional products, but position them also in a view of physical activity and the benefit for, yeah, let, let's see the balance between uh, activity and food intake to assist and help the consumers in that uh, respect. So a lot of creativity and involvement of SMEs in this uh, respect to, to provide you a, a highlight. Now, and then something uh, pretty new uh, to us is the participation with the World Economic Forum, uh, also a public-private partnership by itself, of course. And then at the global level, the World Economic Forum set up a new initiative, the Food Systems uh, Initiative, in which uh, around the globe, similar type of uh, food innovation hubs are being assisted to start. 
and and in Europe, I think we already have preferred and and well supported type of organizations from a regional, national, and and European level to facilitate in that innovation. But it's definitely not so much the case all over the world. And the World Economic Forum is is trying to establish more hubs around the world to also assist this global interaction in partners. And and Food Valley has. Um, yeah, taken up the role to to assist also in that as a, a food innovation hub Europe, and we are really open to all type of collaborations in this point of view, also within Europe with other clusters and a European engagement strategy to assist in in the large transitions that we are facing, yeah? sustainable development goals that are in front of us, and also in the the run towards the uh, yeah, UN Food System Summit that are upcoming uh, this year, but also, of course, following it later uh, in that. And then we see interaction with those global hubs taking place in, in, a, in a respect that we hopefully can also assist in yeah, really challenging those global uh, challenges we have and also the, provide the global solutions that could be uh, derived from that. Now, that is a very new and interesting development, I think. Happy to share with that and also um, yeah, once again, highlight to uh, get this connection going and get connected and 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 participate in that uh, in that respect. And I'm uh, yeah very open to further uh, go into the discussion and and talk about this. So thank you. A brief um, a view from a cluster point of view, and I uh, yeah happy uh, to further touch base upon that. Thank you very yep. much. I think this yeah. is a very interesting uh, mediator role you have there. It shows that this is really something you have to, to, to connect academics, uh, SME startups, international players, consumer organization sport, that this is really an exchange of many stakeholders from different point of views. I think this is why I think really a challenge, but also really a chance. And um, we have already one question. Uh, we have several questions, but this I want to ask you immediately. How can we participate in the Food Valley Summit in October is one of the questions. Perhaps you can answer this. <laughs> you rise yeah. interest in you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, there's um, yeah a, a lot of opportunities in this um, uh, type of um, collaborations we have. So multi-partner approaches. I have no clue where the question comes from, but we often highlight SMEs in our um, uh, programs and events also to support that entrepreneurship and, and, and stimulate it. Um, we are, of course, as we all are in the definition of what type of actions are relevant in point of view of COVID and fiscal versus digital meetings. Uh, and also the uh, UN uh, Food System Summit, for example, are all taking place digitally this year. So we, we really have to look into what type of participation is needed. But uh, you can contact me uh, directly if there is a specific need. Thank you very much. And now we're coming to the academic world. Professor Roberto Papa, Professor in Plant Genetics, Universita Politecnia de la Marche. My Italian is really terrible, but uh, thank you very much. And the uh, floor is yours. So thanks a lot. And uh, the pronunciation is Universita Politecnica delle Marche, just to. I, I learned it. <laughs> but it's perfectly done as well. So I, first of all, I want to thank you all uh, for the very interesting opportunity to be here and the very nice discussion we had till now. And I would like to make an example basically on related on what we are doing on an um, H 2020 project that we are running and where I am the coordinator, which is called Increase. And then here you have also the website where you can um, reach our, let's say, website and all the information related. Where we have also, uh, in addition to other aspects, um, let's say, start to um, apply a participatory research involving many stakeholders and citizen science approaches involving citizen uh, toward the transition to the plant-based diet, but apply to an issue that is very specific. That is the exploitation of food lagging genetic resources for crop improvement, basically, and for conservation of diversity. So here is a very uh, known, uh, let's say, figure, let's say, where that we can see this paper of Garten that show very clearly that uh, considering the challenge of the growth population, if you want, if you want to feed 
the human population with uh, healthy and nutritious food, we must, uh, the, and we at the same time, we want to keep the planetary boundaries and save, let's say, the planet for the biodiversity, the fresh water, all the things that have already been said, uh, starting also from the issue related to soil fertility and uh, restoration. We must change our diet. So this is a, the transition towards plant-based diet is a must. And this issue is uh, same, somehow in the intersection of, of many, uh, let's say, societal challenges. And the center of this intersection is related to food legume that is related to the different type of agriculture that allow, uh, let's say, soil um, restoration, soil fertility is related to the, the production, the soil uh, availability, but also gas um, emissions. And the, the, the typical issue are health aspect related to the benefits of a plant-based diet and uh, let's say a legume-based diet on health. This is also something that is related to the, mm, let's say, the, the diet, Mediterranean diet, the Dieta de Mediterranea, we call it, the food security, because we said that we, are already, we already know the importance of reducing the use of lands. And this is one aspect that is very important if we move our diet towards uh, a plant-based diet, the sustainability, because we have to produce this in a, in a proper way and in a, in a, in a I mean, in, in a, in a re restorable way, in a, re in a reproducible way. But another aspect that is very important is the culture. And in a way, this has already been mentioned here um, by about um, John Sanders about the, the, the education role and also about the, 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 the food valley issue that is we need to have some more diffusion of information, cooperation and interactions. And this aspect is important because then culture is keeping together the two aspects of the food, uh, the farm to fork, because the farm is a farmer and the food, the fork is hand uh, by, the, by the citizen and the culture connect these two things. And we need to do, to exploit properly the farm to fork strategy to think about what we are doing. And we have to think, for instance, to focus on food legumes that are part of the tradition of agriculture in Europe and the part of the tradition of, of, the, of uh, food uh, tradition in Europe and the Mediterranean uh, area. This is because it's important when we think about the future of agriculture, think in terms of agroecosystem, not only about a specific crop of a specific product. We have always the need to reconnect to a more global issue as also uh, Roberto Berruti was saying before. This is the project. Clearly, in the project, we do many different things from a lot of genomics issues, and we, we, we play a lot with other aspects related to very innovative approaches. And we have also a very international project involving not only European um, partners, but also partners from uh, Asia, like ICRISAT and ICARDA, that are very important center, Babilov Institute from Russia then Canada with Saskatoon and uh, also Argentina and US. Very different, the multi-actor uh, approach is really highly implemented. But one of the aspects that we, on which we have focus is the participatory research. This is not everything of our project, but I think this is important to think how we can, uh, let's say, develop the innovation to me in a, in a proper way in uh, uh, especially when we speak about food, that is something that is really related to the life of everybody every day and of the, of the choice of, every, of everybody every day. So the idea is we have basically distributed 1000 uh, variety of common bean to uh, European citizen. And then we use an app to use this and they, we, they will help us in uh, evaluating these materials and through system based on uh, information technology like uh, um, artificial intelligence and, uh, and blockchain, we will, will use the, all this data to uh, develop um, new knowledge, but at the same time, preserve the diversity of these beings. And this is the response that we had from European citizen. 
that was particularly strong, I would say, we were a little bit unexpected. So we are running out of, of seeds, but we will be able to do it. Uh, till now, we have just closed the registration. We have about 3,500 citizens from all of Europe that will host in their gardens, in their fields, in their balconies, the beans, and then grow, help us in assessing this material. The next year, I hope that the distribution which is already very good, will be a little bit better because clearly, I mean, we have a lot of uh, concentration in Italy and Portugal because of the effort of, uh, let's say, advertising was much higher, but I think that the, the, the situation is spreading all, all over Europe and we are very interested to see how this will proceed. But this, I think, is important because this is um, connecting um, this project that is a, basically a, an innovation project to the relationship with citizen, the citizen, and also association of citizen or school. And this is aspect of the culture, the way out to, uh, to bring people to help us in do this innovation. We'll also be able to improve our capacity to interact with people and to communicate uh, in a proper way with citizen about uh, science, about uh, scientific issues and also cultural aspects. Nevertheless, we have also uh, developed a stakeholder consortium to be able directly from the beginning of the project to involve stakeholders and transfer directly all the information that we are producing. And uh, till now we have about 500 um, stakeholders that have been uh, almost registered, but I mean, is we are finalizing the registration. And also there are very different type of, of, of um, of, seed, of uh, let's say stakeholders like uh, breeders, like uh, small uh, enterprise of uh, let's say food chain and things like that. Teachers, for instance, a lot of schools. This again is going on the possibility to develop the innovation to, to bring all this, let's say energy inside this possibility. Let's say school, for instance, are a great place where we can also um, ask high, uh, high school students to help us and the, along their teachers and to involve them in this op op operation, this campaign of, of change and innovation. This is more or less the, some figure that we have used from the video. This is if you want to download our app, you can scan this logo. And I don't want to stay more on this ground. I think that is more or less what I wanted to say. I wanted to thank you. And I would be very happy to answer any question. Thank you, Mr. Papa. I think this is exactly you brought us now in a, a really a real example what we can do, what is Horizon Europe can support, and that you can involve citizens. And I think this is the last aspect we had already to see it, Mr. from Mr. Maltas, that we have to, 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 um, uh, to bring consumers and citizens on board in the solutions, and academics are playing a key role. And, and I think um, this is exactly what we need more. And uh, we have already some questions also from the audience, but also from our sides. I think we're coming back to Mr. Roberto Beruti. If he is there or he's in the call, um, now he is here. I'm and there. I'm there. I guess I think um, we get now very good input from, from interventions from our speakers. And um, I would only say um, the first thing what, what Mr. Coppins, um, Patrick Coppins said. Um, the Horizon to Europe project is a good key, but where is we need more? We need this 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 environment of of uh, innovation, and and we need the best also in the regulation way, and also in the protection of intellectual property. Um, is this Horizon event to in a part of of the strategy to to reach these targets, or is this to see separated? How we can think this is. How is the Commission reacting if they say, okay, we have the Real Horizon Europe project, but what in fact we need the uh, uh, tools connected, a, a common thing that we can reach these targets. What we would say as an answer or what you can give us an answer, please, Mr. Boruti. Thanks a lot. Uh, the, the, the topic, uh, the, the point uh, raised by uh, Mr. Coppens is very uh, specific and it's very well done. 
there is a, a discussion ongoing uh, in, inside uh, the commission and there are a lot of actors involved in this, uh, in this uh, sensitive question. Uh, we are trying to, of course, it's not a question of agriculture sector, it's a question of all the uh, sectors uh, that Horizon will cover during the next uh, programming plan. Uh, we are trying to set up, uh, uh, I, I give you just one example, the ownership of the collecting, collected data that uh, will be uh, after the first uh, action um, made by the new technologies is a very sensitive and problematic question to, to handle and to deal uh, with. We are trying to set up a legislation and a secondary legislation just to be able to, uh, to manage this, as I told you, sensitive very sensitive uh, topic. Uh, one of the latest communication made by uh, Commissioner Vestager as an executive vice president uh, uh, responsible for all the research and innovation together with the Commissioner Gabriel and Commissioner Breton is uh, uh, starting to design and to uh, figure out how the the protection of the intellectual property will be, but it's not uh, uh, finalized yet, this uh, process. We are extremely aware of the sensitivity of the topic and uh, we are trying to handle it uh, in, the, in the best way we can. One of the key concepts that we are trying to thrive nowadays is to uh, pull always more a, um, let's say, a European property, uh, a capacity to be independent in terms of intellectual property. I, I give you another small example. Uh, Europe, uh, for different uh, uh, aspect, is using sometimes technology coming from some other countries and some other continents. And this is quite uh, a delicate uh, topic because if you own the technology uh, and you own uh, the intellectual property of the tools that uh, somebody else is using, you can uh, sometimes also own the data that these tools are collecting. And uh, this is uh, coming uh, always more a sensitive uh, problem. So we are trying to build up a European uh, technology on different and uh, various uh, sectors to be able to own not just uh, the technology, but also, for instance, as I said before, all the data collected by this kind of technology. But it's a, an ongoing process. Uh, I haven't got all the, all the infos on that. And at the same time, is a quite uh, sensitive uh, topic, which is treated, uh, uh, especially as I said, uh, by some other uh, departments and direct directions uh, like DigiGrowth, Defense, and uh, RTD. Uh, we are for sure aware of the of the of the point, and we are trying to do our best to accommodate this uh, incoming need of using always more uh, technology and downstream this kind of technology down to the single uh, final user. But at the same time, we have to combine this kind of uh, not easy uh, management of uh, the data, for instance. But uh, I, this is my, my answer. I can assure that is a, a, a well-known and well-treated uh, topic.
I just want to change the subject and uh, uh, well, and say that I welcome uh, very happily uh, what Roberto Papa said uh, right in the end, because I'm a very uh, big supporter of the education of the citizen. Um, uh, if I can uh, make a personal remark on my personal capacity, I would rather to uh, boost and to increase the education uh, toward the citizen and the final consumer more than giving some uh, synthetic uh, definition of what is healthy and what is not healthy. Because uh, we are running the risk to mislead uh, and to, uh, to make it, uh, to make a, a exceed of simplification that could somehow and in some occasion not give the right uh, uh, information mm, and i let me let me just say the information about the contents the quantity of salt uh, fat uh, sugar and whatever are already in every single levels if we uh, make the synthesis and we summarize in the wrong way, we risk to move and to push consumers to buy something just because uh, there is a, a, a green, a yellow or red uh, label. Uh, we have to start a, I, I know, a more complicated uh, path to uh, educate people to use the right portions and to put together uh, all the components of the diets that made our culture. I, I, I really love the mention that uh, Roberto Papa said made on the culture because we cannot forget uh, where we come from. And uh, we have to valorize, of course, what is good to be valorized and we have to uh, avoid or to push consumers to limit what is uh, harmful for the for the security for the health but we we have to tend not to give too much simplified messages too much simplified messages that uh, could mislead the, the 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 decision the final decision of the consumers in buying one product or the others Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think this is a very important uh, point you made in, in the end, um, uh, because I, I think we have to empower consumers to make their own decisions. And if we to simplify this, uh, I think this leading is also a mistrust in the decision of the consumers. And I think for politicians, it's easier to make some simple solutions and to educate people, because this is always a long term way. And I think, yeah, I, I appreciate very much your, your comment uh, in, on, on this topic. We have now not so much time. I want to have raised only two questions and then to give it to Dr. Paul Riebeck for the closing remarks. We have one from the audience. And I think I can summarize this, how we can bring these different uh, partners from the val uh, food value chain together because there's also competition. Where is the interest to cooperate? The question was uh, directed to Mr. Johan Sanders from FEDIMA. Please, the floor is yours. So I think it's a great question. I saw that as well. I, I think um, if, if I compare ourselves to the US, uh, in the US, you have more integrated associations. In Europe, we have more fragmented associations. And the reason why I mentioned associations, associations are the platform to work together in a non-competitive way. So I think it's one of the opportunities and challenges for FEDIMA to reach out to the to the wider, let's say, chain, being the millers, being the packaging suppliers, being the consumers, and to bring bring those elements of the of the, the total chain uh, together. But it's 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 difficult because of the very fragmented nature of of of, of Europe. But um, it, there's definitely an opportunity. Thank you very much. And I want to come talk back to Professor Roberto Papa. One question: You are a scientist in some way. We have also this move in Europa back to the roots, uh, critical to scientific solutions, perhaps that is not everything is embraced because it is also produced regional, what is not wrong, but also to, to make it more, as would say, there's a movement which says 
scientific can be not always the solution. We have to go a little bit back uh, to, to former times. How is your impression, Professor Papa? Please, the floor is yours. As, as usually, I was mute. Um, I'm not sure fully to have understood the point, but I think that uh, the clearly science cannot be the, the way to make solu solutions because solutions are usually political. So I think that science can help the society to make solutions. This is our role. And I think that then we have to be clear and distinguish these two aspects because otherwise when we have made confusion, then things make, make, became complicated because clearly then the, the, the interest of the people that are involved in the different uh, aspects that are dealing with innovation and change and economy are so complex that cannot be solved in a scientific way. That is a very objective way, but we need to have go down and speak with the people and make the discussion. That I think is the, the point. The important point to me is that from the, let's say the political ground, there's, there is a recognition of uh, the scientific facts. So basically you can say, I smoke because I'm, I like it, even if I know that this is bad for me. But you cannot say I smoke because it doesn't make, uh, let's say, any harm to me. So you have to recognize the scientific fact, then in a way you, is it the freedom of choice to do whatever you want. This is my, my point of view. Okay. I could, you give the, 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 the background for making proper decisions, in fact. And Mr. Wouters, only also for you, um, if you're working together in innovation, you have also two interest groups. One is uh, the, the companies, one are the consumers, in fact. How to bring this interest together and this trust? Yeah, what we, we try to stimulate in the innovation approaches also is that, for example, personalized nutrition is companies to really dive into the specific consumer needs and benefits and get that interaction going. Um, by which uh, the, the uh, let's say, yeah, value proposition of the company is directed to the, um, the consumers. And we see quite a change also in the COVID-19 situation, but in general on the focus on sustainability, that the consumer willingness is, is really shifting to well, sustainable and healthy type of nutrition. And we try to connect that uh, more clearly. Thank you very much. Yeah. And to Patrick Coppins, also a short question. Um, how are you thinking can you support these difficult questions about to change this environment? Do you have some 12 points you say we have to do this as a, as a, as a master strategy? Could you help the commission? Well, we, we try to help the commission as much as we can and we are in contact with the commission uh, and we have to, to consider, of course, that the commission is working under um, in a framework that is not controlled that they cannot control uh, in all ways uh, like for instance the the aspects that i raised as um, elements that make innovation sometimes difficult in the food area uh, are caused by not only the way in which the authorization processes are run but for instance also the legal framework because that is determining what can be done what cannot be done and also and that is really a very difficult aspect is the member states because most of the decision if not all decisions that are taken in the european union are also taken by the member states together with the European Parliament and sometimes without the European Parliament. Uh, and if member states just drag on discussing things without clear objectives and, because, and, and without a clear agreement of what they want to achieve, then of course the Commission is also powerless to, to change that. So there must be collaboration between member states, between member states and Commission, and everybody must be or going and agreeing on the right direction. Otherwise, no progress is being made. Thank you very much. And Mr. Papa wanted to, Professor Papa wanted to answer questions about beans are widely consumed in developing countries like India. Biodiversity of beans in this region needs to be exploited as well. Increase has any plan to support such, pro support such problem in these countries. Citizens' education is an impressive program. I think education about conservation and do conservation at farmers' level is also important. Please, a short answer, then we're going to... Yes, we are planning to go also internationally. That's why we have all these international collaborations with uh, uh, organizations like ICRISAT and ICARDA. 
but I mean, increase is not doing breeding itself is doing the, let's say the activity of conservation distribution of genetic resources and assessment. But for sure, the, our approach is international, open science, open to the world as the European uh, role on these uh, aspects. Thank you very much. And now we're coming to Dr. Paul Rui, president of ESMI Connect and also board member of EIT and member of the European Economic and Social Committee. And uh, I think you have a, a strong relation because you made your doctor thesis about uh, uh, intellectual property. And uh, also you have a very strong relation to water. And uh, we, we know that uh, agriculture is using nearly 70% of, of, of water uh, in, 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 in the global summarized. And uh, I think there is also a key, if it's speaking about food, we speak about water, we speak about intellectual property, we speak about regulation, environment, uh, competition, consumers, please, the, cl uh, the closing remarks are on you. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Heitz. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be uh, with you in these meetings. And uh, I also have to congratulate uh, the speakers for this very forward thinking, and I think uh, a structural approach to how we can uh, get uh, better effects in, in, in our daily uh, life and uh, daily work. So uh, the debate was uh, from the soil uh, to, to the waste or to the waste water uh, to keep it uh, with the sustainable development goals. You know, uh, my priority uh, in, in the political debates uh, are three out of the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, it's number two is uh, sustainable food and, and feed. Uh, number six is uh, clean water and sanitation. And number seven is uh, renewable energy. I think uh, that's a triangle, uh, which is the base for human living. And uh, if we work on this triangle with a good concept on investment, on education, on science and research, uh, I think that will uh, work uh, properly. Uh, I'm also in the governing board of the European Institute of Technology. You know, we have a knowledge innovation center there, uh, specialized on food. Uh, we have another one on digitalization, one on raw materials, one on manufacturing. Uh, the EIT has a budget of approximately 3 billion euro uh, for seven years. So we are taking care on startups, on scale-ups. Uh, we try to get higher education uh, in the entrepreneurial dimension. And I think all of this is, is very helpful to see that on the European level, if we work together, if we push our agenda, we can achieve a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm very thankful that this conference uh, brought a, new, a lot of new ideas, uh, innovation, where we, if we work together, uh, can also convince the political level. And I was more than 20 years member of European Parliament. I was in a national parliament, in a regional assembly, uh, and I'm an entrepreneur myself. Uh, so uh, understanding that we have to be present and uh, that we have to uh, talk. Uh, and, you know, I, I started also business administration and marketing. So if you spread a message more than 30 times, the same message, uh, maybe it's understood. So. All the best and uh, thank you so much and hopefully to see you soon. soon. Thanking also the whole team for organizing this very important uh, conference and uh, all the best. Uh, hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Paul, for your closing remarks. I want only to highlight now only that this uh, connection we have now here, I would like to, to bring it also to to relations in the future. We have a working group about health and nutrition. I invite you there. We want to support the commission. We have also our next event about food labeling, empowering consumers to make informed choices on the 29th of April. And um, I think this is only a starting point because if we have one like we highlighting and framing of course topics, but in the same time, we want also to have concrete work relations and how we can support you also as SME Connect or our members can support you. We are a network, if we work together, we have more for our citizens, more for Europe and more for our businesses also. 
Thank you very much. Thank you to the speakers. Thank you to especially to Mr. Beruti. And I hope to see you soon. <laughs>